Oscar, my friend. You know, is it true that they christened you Ernest Wilde? Ernest Wilde, it's everything I'm not. How can a man spend a lifetime at odds with his own name and not be a little bent? No, that's not true. They called me Oscar. Oscar Fingal of Flaherty Wills Wild. Others of names, I have a whole sentence. I was born with a sentence hanging over me. Well, with a fine name like that, Oscar, I mean, do you have an ambition in life? Uh, my aim in life is to be extraordinarily interesting. If you start off with a brogue, an arse my size, and a face like a lump of dough, that's not easy. I was a socially disadvantaged child. Public school, Trinity College, Dublin, Magdalen College, Oxford, enough to drive any poor bugger to the bar. I try not to feel social resentment, but I can't help envying the privileges of the poor. Almost total freedom from indigestion. No need to panic about what to wear, no time to indulge in fruitless metaphysical speculation. It's their naturalness I envy. Uh, no, that's not true. I detest nature. It seems to me somehow inept, cliched. I watch some little goldfish swimming perfunctorily around and find it singularly unconvincing. Oh, they do their best, no doubt, but animals are such atrocious actors. They always botch things up. Nature lacks the knack of improvising. It just keeps doing the same dreary thing, whereas I never do the same thing twice, which is what makes me so fascinating. My whole life has been one long, unnatural practice. You can't predict me like you can a cauliflower. <laughs> Stephen Ray, what do you feel about Oscar now that you've been playing him for about weeks and weeks and weeks? Well, I'm inclined to feel he was you know, the greatest man that ever lived, really. He was in, 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 Have you come to admire him as the more you've come to grips with the character? Yes, I mean, I think the achievement was huge uh, in literary terms, and we're inclined to forget that he wrote so much because we just remember the comedies of manners. And in fact, there's a huge uh, area of writing which isn't really that famous and well known. The one thing I noticed when, when I went to see uh, St. Oscar last night was that it's quite, he was quite political, or he was used politically as opposed to being quite political himself. I think the gesture of his life was a very political thing, you know, uh, being gay, being Irish, um, inventing his own life as he went along. Inventing, reinventing language for himself because he was an Irishman outside that yeah. culture. It was a very political life. That's why they did for him. Yeah. Know. Now, when you took on this play and, and decided that Field Day was going to take it out around to kind of not traditional theatre venues, yeah. were you wondering about what kind of reaction you would get? Yeah, I was a bit, you know, I thought, well, you know, there's a few fruity words in it. I thought maybe, you know, the odd non. Uh, or a priest might be upset, but of course, in the end of the day, those are the last people who are upset. It's always just small-minded people who are upset. Yeah. The, um, it's, it's been brilliant in the non-theatre venues. We did at Anderson's Town a couple of weeks ago in West Belfast, and it was a brilliant night, you know. Of course, there is a line in there where, where he says, uh, there's no justice for an Irish man in a British court. I presume yeah. that got a... a well, since the Guildford Four, that gets a round of applause almost every night. You know? Is that the function of Field Day, you reckon, as a theatre company, to go out and be provocative? I'd like us to be provocative, but uh, I think we go out as well, not just to, you know, preach to people or lecture them, but to get, I get an awful lot back from the audiences, you know. I, I think it's important that at this time that plays are seen by all over Ireland, the same plays, you know, are seen by audiences in Cork and Ballycastle. I think the whole country should be getting the same kind of messages. And do you, th do you reckon a play like this is, is a better way to break down barriers about gayness and things like that rather than, than, than rely on American films? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it, you couldn't come away from this play without admiring Oscar and having to think twice about uh, any prejudice you might have against gay people. Uh, did you, in the back of your head at all, were you worried uh, that Michael McLeamore, according to everybody down here, had done the definitive Oscar and yet here you were coming into the Abbey Theatre yeah. to do another Oscar. Well, there's always a problem, isn't there, with um, doing something that someone else has done. But the, Terry's play is so radically different from how Mayhall would have done it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it really is very political play. So I wasn't too worried, you know. I believe that, you know, the play is greater than the actor and you've got to serve that play, I think, you know. Yeah. You, have you made a choice, Stephen, that, that uh, the stage is going to be your, your major platform? I mean, you did Company of Wolves. Yeah. It looked like a movie career was going to stop, and yet you went back to the theatre. Yes, I mean, I am very tied up with the theatre, there's no question. You know, my 
every year at this time I do the field day thing, and that kind of rules me out of of other work a lot of the time. I, no, I would. I think maybe next year I'll uh, do something a bit non-theatrical because I like follow. I mean, you must. Have, have you had you? Do you work off long-term goals, or do you just kind of take it every six months as a goal? Well, I mean, I've been asked to do a film that Mike Lee is directing me next year, and I may do that. You know, if I can work it out properly in terms of the time. You know? I mean, it is time I did another film. Yeah. I mean, theatre work is like being a prize fighter, you know, really. You just stand up and get thumped every night, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you restless kind of in yourself as an individual? I'm not restless. I'm more, I used to be more restless. I'm fine now. I just had a, my wife and I just had a baby this year, and that kind of settles you. you know? do, you, do you really really think that, Stephen? Yeah. Well, maybe that's only a phase I'm passing through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you enjoy the kind of role of family man now? Uh... I don't mind it a bit, you know. I mean, I've had a good run from my money, you know. Yeah, it's a hard acting gig, though, isn't it? Ah, it is, yeah. <laughs> you have to pretend like you like ch changing nappies and stuff like that. I know.